Wisconsin has fired Paul Christ as their head football coach. And the interim head coach is defensive coordinator Jim Leonard, who has been there since, I believe, 2016, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but here is, here's the situation. We knew that things were trending south for Wisconsin. The Big Ten is about to move from divisions into just one giant conference, so they're not going to have the built-in advantage as far as the schedule is concerned going forward. Uh, as it sits right now, that schedule is not actually much of an advantage, especially when you see Illinois come into town and win 34-10 to playing the exact same kind of football that you have been known to play for a very long time. Brett Bielema built in one season what Wisconsin used to do. I mean, it's it's really remarkable to see how they were able to dominate that game when they were uh, uh, held to 300 yards of total offense, and yet they were able to win the game 34-10 to in Madison. I mean, that normally does not happen. So that's three losses now on the season for Wisconsin. And rather than wait until the end of the year, like forget being the classy bunch and all that, they go ahead and let go of Paul Christ. Now here is what I'm curious about. Christ, we're going to pull this up on, that is the wrong one. Uh, Paul Christ was owed over $19 million in his buyout. And he accepted $11 million in his buyout. Now, the story here is that he will be paid his full buyout no later than February 1st. So that is the situation. Why would he take $11 million when he can take $19 million over a longer span of time? Well, first off, any good investor usually tells you that taking the money up front is likely better. The other part of this is what was the situation with the contract? If Paul Chris decides that he wants to take another job, would some of whatever he makes at a new job would that be taken out of this buyout? So that's a question that you got to pay attention to, right? The other question that you might want to ask is was this just a complete firing or was Paul Christ kind of done with this too? Like, do you think that maybe he was getting a little bit tired of the situation at Wisconsin? Uh, yes, it, we know that there was pressure on him. It, I don't know. It, we can get into it, the philosophical meaning of the word pressure. Like, how much pressure was there really? It's not like his family was going to go hungry or anything. But when you look at uh, Paul Christ and how things have gone basically since the COVID season, remember Wisconsin got hit really, really hard during that COVID season. They had multiple guys out constantly with COVID, et cetera. And then, of course, you move along. He's, he's an older guy anyway. We're moving along. Things are not going as well as he wants them to. Uh, he may have been asked to make some changes. He may have been, I mean, there's all kinds of things that could have gone on behind the scenes. He may have been tired of it. So if Wisconsin came to him and was like, yeah, we're looking at possibly making a change, you know, whatever, and he's like, let's do it now. I mean, that is always a possibility. So we're never going to know exactly what happened behind closed doors, uh, but that's, let's go ahead and move over to the potential candidates, right? I mean, that's, that's what we want to know. Why in the world was Wisconsin pull the plug in the middle of the season if they don't know who it is that they're wanting to go get. And I think it's pretty obvious that there's really only two names on this list that they're going for. One, Nebraska has already made a coaching change. And one of the names that is highly sought after for them is Lance Leipold, of course, the head coach at Kansas right now. Well, if Leipold is looking at the Kansas job, uh, at the uh, Nebraska job, excuse me, I think he would much more prefer to go to Wisconsin where he actually went to school. He went to Wisconsin Whitewater. He graduated from there, coached there for a very long time. He knows the Wisconsin landscape, and the way that his teams play is very reminiscent of the way that Wisconsin used to play. You strengthen your lines, you strengthen the trenches, and you build from there. And if you find a dynamic quarterback or whatever, then yes, your offense can do some really amazing things, but they are very much a run-first offense. That's exactly what they try and do. So, uh, if you want to get in this race early and you want to start talking to Lance Leipold, you go on and get rid of Chris now, and you begin those negotiations with Leipold's people, whoever that may be, right? So, that is one name. The other name is the guy that is getting the interim job, Jim Leonard. He's a young guy, but he played at Wisconsin. He graduated from there. He's been on the staff there for a long time. Chris gave him the opportunity to be the D.C., He's a guy that took over for Dave Aranda, and the defense has not dropped off. They've dropped a little bit this season, but again, 
They gave up 34 points to Illinois, and they only gave up 300 yards. Like, the defense is still fine. There is no real issue there. The offense is the biggest issue for Wisconsin. I, when you look at this, I, I wonder about the And Ralph Russo with the AP actually tweeted about this not that long ago. But this is something that I'd kind of been wondering as well for a while. Sean Lewis is the head coach at Kent State. He's making, like, what? I want to say maybe $500,000 to be the head coach at Kent State. He was the OC for Dino Babers at Syracuse and then got the Kent State job. He played at Wisconsin. Like, that is a guy that really understands modern offense and the way to get chunk yards, et cetera. He is a dynamic play caller. That is maybe somebody that you could bring in, and we've seen this happen before. You could bring him in as the offensive coordinator for Jim Leonard. And there's ways to do that. Remember, there are coordinators in the SEC right now that wouldn't leave for head coaching jobs because they would make less money. Just throwing it out there. The only reason Mike Elko left Texas A&M as a $2 million coordinator was to go be the head coach at Duke where he was basically getting paid double that. And he, he's getting old enough that he wanted the opportunity, right? Uh, and I don't blame him because playing with Jimbo's offense has got to be dreadful, right? I mean, just absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we could look at, you know, all the different candidates, et cetera. But my guess is, like, if, if you got Jim Leonard to be your head coach with Sean Lewis as the offense coordinator... Yeah, I think you'd be. I think that's a home run. That's absolutely a home run. If Jim Leonard is just able to steady the waters and meet somewhat the expectations for this season, yeah, that would work as well. Like Jim Leonard himself, even without Sean Lewis, I think could be a good hire for them. He's young. He has a lot to learn, obviously, but this is somebody that you might can find a way to build a dynamic offense with. Possibly. So, either him or Lance Leipold. Uh, Athlon actually has Dave Aranda as an option. I mean, he did. He was the D.C. there. Uh, but would he want to go back to Wisconsin, or does he want to stay at Baylor? I guess a lot of that depends on how this season goes, uh, what happens with the Big 12, media rights, etc. cetera. Uh, I mean, it, this is, this is going to test a lot of things. Is it better to be in the Big 12 where you think that you can win regularly, or is it better to be in the Big 10 where it's a really good school where you can win, obviously, if you build it correctly, but also you're going to make a lot more money, I would assume. And so Dave Aranda, Matt Campbell, of course, Iowa State head coach, Lance Leipold brought that up, Sean Lewis, head coach at Kent State, uh, Jim Leonard, these are all people that I have talked about. Matt Rule, the head coach at the Carolina Panthers, he is basically on the short list for every big-time job that's going to come open this season if he's not going to stay at Carolina. Just saying. Uh, but the, if you, that's that's depending on if you're willing to wait that long because I don't think Matt Rule is going to leave in the middle of the season. Uh, so it'll be at least mid-January before you can get him. So if you don't care too much about recruiting and all that, you would be getting a good coach. But regardless, uh, Justin Wilcox from California is the last name on this list here. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that one happening. Don't see that one. But we'll see. Um, I don't know. He's a, he is a former Wisconsin assistant. Like, he's, he's been pretty successful at Cal, but regardless. I don't think any of that's going to matter. I think it's Lance Leipold uh, or or Jim Leonard, one or the other. So that's that's how I see that going down. But, man, shocking, to say the least, that that actually happened when it happened, right? Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.